and welcome to worship. We are so thankful that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. A couple of things before we get started this morning. The first is today, November 8th, is our quarterly congregational meeting. Um, due to COVID, we will be gathering on Zoom. You can find that Zoom link on our church website, or you can call the church office and we will help you get connected. Secondly, we are doing Christmas families again this year, but it's going to look a little different also because of COVID. So instead of taking a star and purchasing those things, the service council is asking for your financial donations and they will go out and purchase what needs to be purchased so that all the families that we've adopted can enjoy a wonderful Christmas. If you'd like to donate to that, we ask that you put Christmas families in the memo line of your check. Before we begin worship this morning, we have a temple talk from Teresa. Good morning, Bethlehem members and friends. It is time for our Christmas star project. We have adopted 10 families with 30 children total from the North Cedar School District. Of course, this project will be a little different this year. We won't have our star wall, we also will be giving gift bags to our nursing home residents and shut-ins. This year, service council members will be doing the shopping and gift wrapping. Gifts will be delivered to the North Cedar School for family pickup. Service council asks that you prayerfully consider a monetary donation to make Christmas possible for these families. 2020 has been a hard year for everyone. We just want families and our shut-ins to have moments of joy at Christmas. If you have any questions, please feel free to call Becky Anderson at 319-830-7440 or Teresa Elvram at 319-277-3306. We ask that donations be received by Sunday, November 29th and Christmas Star Project written on your check memo line. Service Council appreciates your prayers and donations. We acknowledge your donations to the many projects 2020 has presented to us. Again, thank you. God be with you as we journey forward. Let us gather together and grow in faith. Faith is the assurance of things not seen. Let us stay alert and prepare for the coming of God. All who wait upon God shall renew their faith. Let us remember that we are God's children. We come ready to worship and be renewed. We leave committed to love our neighbor. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Amos, the fifth chapter, beginning with the 18th verse. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Today's psalm is from Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire to hurt me. Let those who say, ha, 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 Turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. But I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. A reading from 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will be by no means preceded those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together, with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Hey friends, it's good to see you. I hope you've had a good week. I am coming to you from the sanctuary and it's kind of dark in here. Do you know why? Yeah, those lights, they're not on, are they? Because I wanted to talk to you about light today. One of our, our stories from the Bible that we're going to read today talks about 10 women and their special lamps that they had. And it talks about how they needed oil to have their lamps. But I wanted to talk to you about another kind of light. And it's this kind of light right here. When you were really little, this really big candle was lit and you were brought to a font like this one and it had water in it and water was put on your head and you were 
baptized, right? And when you were baptized, you were given a light. Did you know that? You were. You were handed a little candle just like this one. Um, and it was lit from the really big candle because this really big candle is the Christ candle and the really little candle is to remind you to let your light shine. So even if we're not very big, right? This candle's really little compared to that big candle. But even when we're not so big, we can let our light shine and let the light of Jesus shine in us. So we can do nice things for other people. We can wear masks and keep each other safe. There's all sorts of things we can do, right? We can help mom and dad. What are the things that you can do this week to let your light shine before others and let the light of Jesus shine through you when you love one another? Can you think of something? I bet you can. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for loving us and for sending Jesus to us and for putting your light in our hearts, God. Help us shine for you this week. We love you, God. Amen. Have a good week, friends. Bye. Our Holy Gospel for this morning comes from Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you neither know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I wonder today, how are you at waiting? Waiting in line at the grocery store? Waiting for a traffic light to turn? Waiting for this dang pandemic to be behind us? Waiting this week for the results of the presidential election? Do you find yourself waiting a lot? Or are you someone that is so impatient that you don't even wait, you go and do something else? When I was standing in line to vote this week, I thought it was really interesting to watch as people would come up and see how long the line is and some would just resolve themselves that they had to wait and they'd go to the end of the line. And others would look at the line, turn around and walk away, not even willing to wait. Some of us don't wait very well at all, if we're being honest. We're the ones who honk when someone doesn't go, right when the light changes or the ones who count items in the basket of the person in front of us, sure that they must have more than 10 in the express lane. Others of our Bethlehem family, it seems, spend their whole day waiting. For our members that are in assisted care facilities, they wait for things all day long. They wait for someone to come and get them dressed. They wait for their medicine. They wait to be taken down to meals. They wait to be taken back to their rooms. Being dependent on others 
often means that you spend lots and lots of time just waiting. In our gospel text for today, we find a group of young women who are also waiting. This time they're waiting for the groom to appear. The tradition was in Jesus' day, on the evening of a wedding, the bride and the bridesmaids and all the rest of the guests would gather at the bride's house and they would wait for the groom and his crew to arrive. And once the groom and his crew arrived, they would all go together dancing and singing to the place where the wedding was being held. The bridesmaids wouldn't know when the groomsmen would appear. Often, the relatives would still be haggling over the, val haggling over the value of the gifts that were given or the, what was worked out to arrange the marriage. They would wait until they got it all worked out. And then they would all head to the wedding together to celebrate. In that time period, women were typically married in their early to mid-teens. And the bridesmaids would be others who wanted to be married soon too. They would be striving to do their job well so that someone would notice them and arrange their marriage too. In our gospel for this morning, there are 10 of those young women waiting. All 10 of them have lamps, but not all of them brought extra oil. The lamps that they had could be held in your hand. They were small and only held a certain amount of oil and only gave off so much light. To not bring oil to refill them meant they either sat in the dark while they waited or they ran out of oil and couldn't be a part of the wedding procession when the groom arrived. For whatever reason, and we don't know why, the five foolish bridesmaids, they're called, didn't have oil with them. The wise ones have oil and are prepared when the groom and his crew, group are delayed. But when the foolish bridesmaids' lights begin to go out and they ask the wise bridesmaids to share their oil, the wise bridesmaids say no. They don't want to ruin the wedding procession. They don't want to miss out on the feast. So the foolish ones run off to find oil while the wise ones go with the groom into the wedding celebration. But before we judge these foolish bridesmaids too quickly, I wonder if we might find ourselves among them. Because we all do that, I think. We think, oh, I have enough, it'll be fine, or, or I'll do that later, or... We just don't necessarily always plan ahead. We think we have time to fix a broken relationship or offer a word of gratitude or forgiveness. And then suddenly that person that we were meant to mend fences with is no longer here and we can't mend anything. Or we all think that one day down the road we can replace those bad habits with good ones and it'll be fine. Or, or one day down the road we can achieve that goal or spend more time with our families or whatever it is. Except day turns to day and week turns to week and pretty soon we've spent all our whole lives doing things that aren't really important to us, aren't what we're passionate about, and often aren't even where our gifts lie. And just like the foolish bridesmaids at the end of it all, we are missing out. Missing out on relationships, missing out on healing, and we sit and we wonder where it all went wrong. So I wonder today if we could maybe take a lesson from this parable and if we could maybe think about what we might be doing in this waiting time. Because I don't even need to talk to you to know that every single one of us wishes this pandemic would be done tomorrow. But it isn't going to be. So what is it that you can do to be an active waiter? What is it that you can do to keep the faith in the midst of this waiting time, no matter how long it is? Because if we're being honest, the longer we wait sometimes, the harder the waiting becomes. The longer we're apart, the more we have to be intentional about building our relationships and caring for one another. This morning's parable is calling us to see the kingdom of God is around us even when we have to look harder. 
It's calling us to an improved commitment to live our lives as faithful disciples. It calls us to live our lives ready that Jesus could come back today and we would be ready. And I'm willing to bet a lot of us aren't. This parable calls us to live lives of hope while a lot of us struggle in darkness. So what can you do to be a hope-filled, active waiter? Where do you go for hope and light in the midst of the difficult? I think that's part of the reason that we gather together. And even if we can only gather online or in cars, we come to hear the word of God in the midst of our chaos. We come to be reminded that Jesus comes once more to bring peace, to bring love, to give us abundant life. Maybe in this time of waiting, you can reevaluate what gifts you have been given and find a way to use them to love your neighbor or to make the world a more meaningful place for someone. Maybe you have the gift of baking and you can drop off treats to some essential workers who are working overtime. Maybe you have the gift of carpentry and you can help an elderly neighbor fix their steps or build them a ramp. Maybe you have the gift of encouragement and you could get a list of, from Bethlehem of people that live alone and drop them a line to remind them that we are all in this together. Maybe during this waiting time, you could be trying a new skill for the first time. What gift from God have you been given that you could be using to love your neighbor in these challenging days? It's a lot to think about, friends, but I invite you to do just that, to think about what it is that you can be doing to help you weather the waiting. Because we are all waiting waiting for pandemic to be over, waiting to regather with loved ones, waiting to come back to church, waiting and waiting and waiting forever, it seems. And all of us are also waiting for the return of Jesus. I pray this week that you can find a way to live into the waiting time in a more joy-filled and positive way. That instead of looking at the, at the waiting as something to be discouraged by, that you can look at the waiting as a place to learn, a place to grow, a place to deepen your relationship with the one who's always with us while we wait. Let's pray. God of grace, we thank you that you are with us while we wait for you to come. Be with us this day and in the days ahead that are filled with waiting. Teach us how to wait with purpose. Teach us how to keep the faith while we wait. Send us signs of your kingdom come and fill us, Lord, with love for one another. In your heavenly name we pray.
Let us profess our faith together through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, let us pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all who are in need. Holy God, be with us as we wait. Remind us that you do not abandon us in this meantime that we are in. Fill us with hope. Fill us with courage. Fill us with faith in your provision. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land, in the hearts of those who guard the law, and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Grant healing touch to those who are ill, especially Chris, Steve, Julie, Brandon, Dwight, Dale, Cynthia, Christina, Antoine, Joel, and the Schneider family. Be with all of us in this time of physical distancing due to pandemic. Help us, Lord, to find new ways to connect to you and to one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray our offering prayer together. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. Receive the blessing. Go now and follow in the footsteps of those who have gone before us in Christ. And may God protect you along the way. May Christ Jesus keep you alert and prepared. And may the Holy Spirit fuel the lamp that guides your path. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray together the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen.